the pandemic's changed all of us in a lot of ways in terms of how we work, um, kind of how, what we value you know, in life. Uh, here in the United States, uh, we lost 1.1 million people due to COVID. Uh, studies indicate maybe about 900,000 of those individuals would have been in the work workforce, but now they're gone. So, you know, in a lot of ways, there's that. There's uh, also retirements. We had a lot of people that exited the workforce earlier than they would have otherwise uh, because they're viewing life through a different lens. Uh, and they've said, you know, this isn't worth it, or I want to do something different with my time. And they've completely exited, whereas they probably would st still be working right now. Um, also, child care and elder care continues to be a significant issue in our country, uh, which unfortunately, culturally in our country, that falls largely to women. Uh, and until we figure that out, we're going to have a large segment of the workforce uh, that is inaccessible you know, to, to us as employers. Um, and then we have a demographics issue. We've long talked about the, the enrollment cliff of 2025, but that affects the workforce too. Um, and so what we're also seeing as we move forward in time, we've had less participation uh, in, the, just, in just the workforce over time, and that's expected to continue to decline. So you take all that together, and we have more openings uh, in higher education than we have people to fill them. The biggest reason that the individuals who participated reported leaving is pay, uh, which is not a surprise in the least, given the current economic environment um, and kind of what some other employers, especially outside of education, are doing to uh, lure top talent. Uh, but overall, the biggest predictor or the biggest driver of retention in higher education is job satisfaction uh, and well-being. And there's a lot that goes into that. But ultimately, if someone is satisfied with their work, if they're recognized for their contributions, um, if they are regularly receive you know, praise, if they have a boss that actually invests in them and is, trying, is looking out for their overall well-being, uh, we've got a good culture that encourages overall well-being. These are all things that help create a space that people are more likely to stay in, you know, as well. But flexibility and remote work continues, continues to be a big driver, you know, as well. And we have a significant misalignment uh, with that in higher education. Um, and as for where people are going when they're looking outside of higher education, uh, the response tells us overall people are, are looking to stay in higher education, but when it comes to our, our IT friends, which is what we're here to talk about primarily, uh, a significant number of them, that's about 78%, are looking at that for-profit uh, you know, community outside of the nonprofit higher education uh, world. So um, that's actually not too much of a surprise given what we were also dealing with pre-pandemic with IT positions and some of our top talent being pulled away. Well, I mean, first and foremost, continue to advocate for salary increases and regular pay increases that are meaningful. Um, you know, as a CIO, you know, or as a, you know, a, a chief technology officer, you know, typically you're going to be more senior in the organization, have a seat at the table, have the ear of HR and the, and the president talk about these things. Um, the fact of the matter is, is that pay continues to be a big driver, but we can also do more to offer uh, options in the way of remote and hybrid work, which helps with that flexibility piece. Uh, furthermore, we've got to be mindful of the workload and what we're asking people to do and how our culture impacts people's overall well-being and ultimately their job satisfaction you know, as well. Um, and also simple things like looking for ways to recognize employees for their retention, um, asking them you know, some of the simple questions that would like, how are things going? What are something, how can I help you? Um, are there things about your job that energize you or maybe that drag you down? Um, and also uh, having a, kind of a, a concern or um, enter into conversations with their teams or, well, what is it you would like to do? You know, when, I like to say, what do you want to be when you grow up? But it's basically the same thing. It's, you know, if it's not where you currently are, what, what is it you would like to be and how do we help you get there? Because ultimately these are things that all contribute to the culture of our organization, um, our, our teams, and help drive overall job, job satisfaction and well-being. Mm -hmm.